is now a great book celebrating 50, 60 years of your of your talents as an artist and designer. Although I noticed in here it actually goes back even earlier. There's a picture from 1945 as well. So did, when did you realise you had like an artistic gift? Was it that early? I think it was the whole family. We had my uh, my brothers were artistically interested, my mother, my father, so that was natural that I could have came to do that. You know, whatever you know, was going to happen, I knew when I was about 15, and we had to decide, am I going to do music, or was it going to be classic pianist, and it was always really good. Yeah. And Chopin, and Liszt, and Brahms, and anyway, Cacciatura, and Bartol, and everything. But we decided to do a graphic side. At that time, rock and roll or popular music was even on the yeah. nobody knew about. It. Was there was there an artist or designer that you admired and that you sort of, um, you learned from when when you were developing your own style? Yes, Saul Bass is a, an artist who uh, I admire. He did lots of roles. Example for for certain films he did very great and uh, credits he was uh, one. And I, I remember reading, correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, that you're dyslexic. Is, is that yes. right? Yeah. So did, did that did that did that then cause you to be more artistic? Because you said that you never written lyrics really. Well, I never knew that I was dyslexic until uh, much later time. I should have known because it was apparent at school when I was supposed to read something or you know, it was just terrible. I died to power and death, which made me very inhibited. I really fell off. And once I knew that I had this problem, I built my little crib and crutches. You know? Like for example, I can only understand the concept of something written when I read loud. And it's a, a transport from the one brain half the other. And once you know that, you can handle it. I cannot, like some people can, can talk and write something at the same time. I can't read a book and then listen to something. And I think in a lot of the artwork, particularly the cover for Revolver, you relied on uh, Robert Whittaker's pictures, photos. Were you ever interested in photography yourself or did you always let Someone else. In the first place, Robert Whittaker took the back photo, but he's not on the cover. On the cover, we have uh, Robert Freeman, lots of photos of Robert Freeman, and some private pictures from the world who I don't, don't even know yeah. who is and who is there. Who owns the picture, yeah. took the picture, no idea. Did you ask me what to be asked? So what, whether whether you ever had an interest in photography or was that, ah, ah, or was that your, your, yeah, your, right. your friend Astrid? Right. No, no, no. We uh, both of us in our school. A great, great teacher. Yeah. His name was Anna. Very, very famous photographer. Who actually was uh, teaching us photography. And we worked with him. We became big friends too. And I did lots of work for Anna. Photography, I never took too many pictures and I did not take no fantastic pictures in the background. I should give up. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an iconic picture, so it, you must have, you must bring back memories of the time. No, she was taking pictures and I was doing the graphics. That's great. And moving forward into the start of your music career, the moment that you got invited up on stage to play along with that Fats Domino song. Yes. Um, and you, you stated, I think, that you never played a bass, but obviously a musical. Yeah. Did it feel natural the first time that you were <laughs> sat in the band? Yes, very good. Of course, I was very... Uh, yeah, I, I, was, I was embarrassed to be out there with the bass and my name. He plugged in. It was just awful in a way. But it was fun when we started playing. But I was not started with a musical career because then I still was doing graphics for a long time. 
and it, it's strange how it almost came full circle when you, you came back and played on John's rock and roll covers album, which is kind of a return to like the 1950s stuff where you started. It's kind of like a circle that you completed there. But different circumstances, I guess, because you know, John was a different person then. Yeah. It was not, you can't compare it. I mean, uh, what happened on stage in Hamburg is one thing. And doing the songs again with us in the band was another. It was not the same. So, did you, did you miss the, the, the John from the early days? or? the atmosphere. It's impossible to explain to people what it's like if, if you've got a band like this in front of you and you're playing on stage. It's completely different to being in a studio and doing a song. I mean, it's difficult for anybody. If you are a live band and suddenly somebody says, come in the studio, most of the time it's first there. Uh, Life, life performance with people dancing and looking and screaming is a difference. And I remember there's a clip where I think it's the one of the maybe the '69 um, uh, concert, and you're introduced as the person that no one knows what they look like. You know, here's Klaus. You may not know. You may have heard of him, but he, here's what he looks like. That must have been to get some recognition. What that feel like? Yeah, I felt embarrassed. Uh, no, everyone's looking at me. Didn't like because it was a, a, a quite daunting because you had a who's who of the rock players yeah. there to play with. Um, so what, what what did that feel like? You know, you had people like said that George and Eric Clapton, those guys. Well, I knew all those people from the sessions I played on. Even the even the the horn players, I knew them all yeah. because those were the crowd of people that were in the studio playing. But. Uh, the main thing that I remember is that everybody came and was so happy because they came and didn't get any money. So that's why I was so happy to be there. They didn't play at all. Yeah. They played for we played for John Harrison, we played for yeah. Ravi Shankar in the competition. That's what we are used to. And that's the whole atmosphere all through those days what this sort of feeling was about. And um, I'm right in saying for the revolver cover you got paid a flat fee of fifty pounds and that's it, right? So did you did you feel did you feel now you should have asked for more or would you have done it for nothing? Well who was I, you know? I would have done it for nothing, you know. <laughs> it was okay, it was fifty pounds. Perfect day. Yeah. 
Yeah, that whole period. And uh, I guess Mike, just coming back to <laughs> the, the album covers, you did very many of them, but your your best, most remembered for Revolver. Is there another album cover that you wish people re would remember you for? Yeah, I like the cover I did for, for Togo Negro. It's a death pop band. Yeah. You know? Yes. No, no. I, I know the band. I don't, I don't think you know, I know, know the, what the, the cover, cover is? No. I don't know if it's in there. So I'm showing you. It's a, it's a great cover. Yeah. yeah it's good. That's, we will look that up. Okay. There's so many things we'd ask you. You did a great talk earlier on. Um, there's plenty in here to encourage people to check out the book and, and also everything that's going on around Hamburg, the festival, the Greek Revival as well. Again, absolute pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much. Cheers.